Hello everyone, Peacup Tempest here, and today I'm going to be building the house that you see on the screen right now. This will be the second house I have built for the village of Eindhoven. This village is going to be kind of centered around glowberries, and which kind of inspired the name a little bit as well there. And now I will switch over to the the frame and we'll have some numbers up for you. This is going to be a three-part series like before where in part one I do the frame, the walls, and lower detail. In part two I put on the roof and in part three I give a interior tour of the build and I use my standard 7x7 because that's what I want for this particular village and with a 7x7 I'm able to do what I call inner walls with like detail between the pillars and if you kind of look over to the left you can see what I'm talking about and yeah let's start getting into this I'll first show you this little pattern I put together and yeah we'll just get into this if you're going to need the deep slate block the polished in particular the stripped crimson stem the chiseled deep slate deep slate brick stair warp trap door crimson trap door and the light gray stained glass and unlike in the previous build i counted the very first block to be like the one that's down here we're not going to be doing that with this one this one i want to do slightly different so let's bring this up by seven one two three four five six seven and then i'm going to connect all these pillars up on the bottom and the top so you should have something that looks like this when you're done Let's do this exact same thing to all the pillars all the way around until we get to the tower. And this, I'm currently working on the front left hand side of the bill. Here is where a door is going to be, which is why it is framed up the way it is. So let's just bring this all up and keep on going. And then this is going to be a pathway that goes to a bridge over there. I just haven't finished a pathway yet. So that's why this house is facing where the front's going to be here. Alright, now that we are at the tower, let's bring it up by seven first. Connecting everything the same way. Thank you. 
you don't have to do this very front bit that is going to be inside of the house. We will be decorating that once we get to the interior. Alright, we now have this up by 7 from this point. Let's bring it up by 7 once more. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And for this one, let's also bring these up by 7. These little center pillar points. And then for the very top, we won't be putting those in. And the reason these are here is because the roof is going to connect into there. So it just makes it a little easier to decorate and make it look nice. And then, of course, line these up as well. Let me double check myself here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So you want a space of five. So go ahead and double line that. Okay, now let's bring this up by seven as well. two, three, four, five, six, seven, and connect everything up. If you don't want to do the double layer, you could instead bring everything up by six and only cross the very tops. I'm just doing it to add a little more height to the tower so it is more in line with everything else here too. All right. And then I want to go ahead and do this because I think it may look nice, but stick with me on it. I'll figure that out once I go to put the reef on there. Because I wouldn't mind doing the reef a little bit different from what we've got so far for the tower. Alright, now let's take our crimson stem and line everything up. And make sure everything is facing upwards. So it's all going in the same direction. Like so. Let's do that all the way around except for right here in the middle. Let's uh, kind of face one like that and bring it down until we get the door height. And then continue filling everything in until we get all the way around. Sometimes it's easier to do it from the inside. And then we're going to do the same thing back here like we did in the front. So this very middle one. And then let's bring it down until we have a space of two for the door. And then let's keep on going. For the tower, let's only do 
this part here for the very bottom uh, bottom one here and then starting here we'll do a complete box of the crimson all the way up i'll show you what i mean here in a second if you want you can stick some lighting in here just to make sure mobs don't spawn And then here, just kind of bring some of those. Like, like so. You can always break these later to get them facing downward. So you can do this, break those, and do that. And now let's bring all of this up to the top. This is what you should have so far. And here, if you wanted, you could break these two. Now let's start doing our pattern. We're going to start with the chisel deep slate and do one in each corner. And then let's take our deep slate brick stair and do upside down right side up upside down and then here i believe it's upside yep upside down right side up upside down here upside down right side up upside down upside down right side up upside down break out these three and then place trap uh the crimson trap door there it worked there and then the crimson here you can totally do whatever you want to here i just kind of like the look of the mix and then take your light gray stained glass and fill this in and there you have that pattern here uh, you might do something different so let's do right side upstairs but let's alternate them all the way up that way we get a little peek through of that pretty crimson here. Let's do an upside down stair. And then I might grab, that's not what I wanted to do. I might grab some fence. Do the work. Yeah. And do that. And then do the same thing, except you want it to be facing, like the stair is facing toward the door. So do the same thing here, and then alternate. And now let's continue our pattern. Let's put our chiseled in each corner. And then right side. Right side, upside down, right side, upside down. Uh, 
da, da, do. Right. No, upside, right side, upside. I think I did these wrong. No, that's the way I did it. Okay. And then upside, right side, upside. And then upside, right side, upside. Break out the ones in the middle. Do you crimson, warped, crimson? Oops. Like so. And we're going to keep repeating this until we get to the back, and we'll do the same thing. And then do the same thing on the tower. Same thing here. Let's have it facing toward the door and right side up, but alternating. <laughs> and then again here, let's do. Did I do an upside down? I did do an upside down. Okay. Upside down with the warped fence. And then again with the stair, make sure it's facing toward the door, right side up, and then alternate. And let's continue our pattern. do the same thing except this side's going to be upside down these are going to be right side up so we're not going to alternate we're just going to keep them like so so we have that pattern and let's do the same thing here so on the left hand side of this space you want the stair facing toward the right. And then on the right hand side, you want the stair facing to the left, but upside down. And you just keep doing that all the way up. And if you're like standing down here, it can be easier to go start at the top versus trying to do these like this. And it gets harder and harder to place it. So sometimes if you just go ahead and start up there, it makes it a little easier. Let's continue with our pattern. Yeah, then they're glass. 
Let's do the same thing we was doing on the other side. Like so. Alright, we now have our bottom layer done. Let's continue on with the upper layer. We will only do the pattern on the left hand uh, rectangle here. And if the like we've been doing down here. Because this is going to be kind of inside of the house and covered by the uh, roof. So let's just go in and do this. We'll leave this blank for now and fill that in once we get the roof in here. I don't know why I put a center block, so let's go ahead and break that. And then go in with your chiseled and do that same pattern. And break out the middle. Here, I know I said the left hand side, but it's the left hand side on the back half, and it's the right hand side on the front half. So basically, whatever half is not going to be having a roof brought up into it. And then, like I said in the previous video, I like to go ahead and put the pattern in here. Even though it's going to be covered by the roof, it really adds some pretty cool detail. Let me actually pop into this house and show you what I'm talking about. Um, you can, oops, <laughs> you can leave it blank or you can continue the pattern and then whenever you go to decorate you just already have this done and you can make just like a simple adjustment to it to make it look nice like have a doorway and all of that so we are going to continue that pattern even on the inside There is our second level complete. Let's move up to the top level and do that same pattern all the way around. Oh, I forgot to line this one. I was like, something's not right. Let me make sure. Two of the sides.
Sweet. We now have our frame, our inner walls, and all the detail work done. Let's grab us a door. I, I'm not a big fan of the work door, or else I would use it here, because I think it would be a nice contrast. You can use an iron door if you want. I'm just gonna grab this crimson door. And let's stick that on here. And then if you want, you can flip that one like so. Actually, you like that a little bit better. And then I'll probably do some of the like landscaping that I've done on the other one. And let's see. Real quick, because this one may end up being more like a full block. Let's see, path goes here, so down to there. So it may end up looking more like this as it comes into the path. And maybe even like so. Where you kind of like come up into your house. So yeah, definitely a little bit different there. Don't forget to put your lanterns in. I'd probably take this and just on either side of this door do that. Or you have a great opportunity when doing it like this. Because you can do like a lantern style here uh if you wanted it may actually be a little too much because yeah that's way too big but you could do regular lanterns like so you could take and do let's see here campfire and a shovel. And run these across. And then let's grab like, the spruce. Run that along. And then maybe even. Oops. Gotta be crouched. and then do something like that if you wanted and then you could do a, a cute little uh, azalea plant in there and then of course through here do I have a slab available? No. keep getting rid of it so I'll probably end up having these slabs going down through here I know this is a little bit on the decoration side. And then having a little area to put bushes and plants and whatnot. And probably do the same thing over there. But let's also go and do this in the back. And I probably won't have... like it go out very far on this side so probably just like so and then have like a dirt path from here and then you could still do like the campfires and do like a, a mini version of what we had in the front So a little bit of a shorter walkway and then if you wanted you could probably even do some sort of landscaping type thing around through there but i believe that's all i got for you for part one i hope you're enjoying this build i think it's gonna turn out really pretty and be just a little bit different from what i've gotten built so far in here and 
Yeah, and part two we'll put on the roof and be on our way to a complete build. I hope you have a wonderful day. Until next time, goodbye.